So what kind of effect does sin have in our life? What kind of consequences are the consequences just for us or also for those around us? Well, welcome to the Gospel Message radio program. My name is Wes Hepner. Thanks so much for being here. And on today's program, a story from 4,000 years ago about Hagar, Ishmael, Abram, and Sarah in sin that just had a bunch of consequences. We've been going through the story of Mark at the beginning of the year in 2023, learning about the character of Jesus Christ. But in October, we switched 2,000 years prior to that to the time of Abram and the story of how God called him. He's obedient, well, kind of, and he moves away and then a famine comes. He moves to Egypt. He lies about his wife. The king of Egypt sends him away and now he's back home. Lot has separated from him, and last week we read about the incredible covenant that God makes with him. God signs the covenant. Abram just has to believe that God's covenant is true. We know that man can't sign the covenant because man is human, man is sinful, man would break every single covenant. So God signs the covenant with himself, and we know the covenant is true because God cannot fail. And we would think now things will be good. Now Abram will trust. Now the problems will be over. But Abram tries to solve his problem of him not having children of his own with his own wisdom or actually it's his wife. God has promised him descendants as the sand by the sea, as the stars in the sky. And he doesn't have a son. He's old. His wife is old and he listens to the unwise advice from his wife. He tries to fulfill God's promise in his strength. We could say in his own lust. So today we want to look at that story from 4,000 years ago and see the effect of sin and maybe see how it's exactly the same today. Before we go into Genesis chapter 16, let's take time to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity on this radio program to share your word. I pray for each listener, especially those that are discouraged, maybe sick, maybe they feel alone. I pray that you would comfort them, help them not to give up on life and on different things in life. Heavenly Father, because you have a plan for their life. Lord, I just pray that your word would be spoken in your way according to your will, and you would get all the honor and glory for that. I pray this in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Genesis chapter 16, uh, we won't read the whole chapter, the verses 1 to 16. Maybe you can read that at home or as we're going through the program. It's the story of Hagar and Ishmael. And it's we've just been in Genesis chapter 15 where we've read about the promises of God. That Abram would have descendants. His descendants would be a great nation and they would be like the stars in the sky in number. And God seals this promise with a covenant. And right after this in the Bible, after the promise and the covenant, this truth of them having no children starts to bother them. Let's read Genesis 16, 1 and 2. It says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So it doesn't just bother Abram, it bothers his wife Sarah that they don't have any children. Again, God has promised Abram many descendants. And his wife thinks she's the one in the way of God's plan. She's the reason they can't have children. They don't have any children and in those times, it was seen as the woman who did not have any children was cursed. She was seen as doing something wrong. And so Sarai, over the years of having pain in her heart from not having children, pain in her heart from seeing others have children, pain in her heart because she's never held her own child, she wants to take matters into her own hands. And she suggests to Abram that he should go and marry her servant girl, Hagar. Now, in those days, it's quite common for the master of the house to use his slaves in any way. But Abram was different. He should have been different. It sounds like he's never done this before because he wants to be true to his wife. He loves his wife. And Sarai, 
she could justify this because God had promised Abram children and she was just going to help God. I wonder, have you ever tried to do this? You knew God's will in your life, God's promise in your life, and you tried to fulfill it by your own works, through your own power, through your own intelligence. God's promise must also come in God's time because God knows exactly what the right time is in your life, and you don't. And of course, this was against God's will. It was the sin of unbelief in God and His promise. Sarai should have believed that God could make her a mother at her old age. It was sin against God's plan for marriage. God's plan was that one man and one woman should come together to be one flesh. But Abram, he still has the final decision. And he listens to his wife. Now, for most of us as men, we should listen to our wives more often. It's wise when we listen to the wisdom of our wives And most of our wives give us good and godly advice. But our wives are not perfect. And Sarah here was wrong. And Abram here should have said, Sarah, I know your heart hurts because we have not had any children. But I believe that God can do the impossible. Let's trust him. He can do it. I want to stay true to you. I don't want any other woman. But as we know as men, For most of us, one of the weaknesses we have is sexual temptation. And when the temptation is offered, with the blessing of his wife, Abram agrees to this. Remember, Hagar came from Egypt, where Abram should have never been, where he lied about his wife, and now he will sin against God with this same woman. Friends, sin has a way of coming again and again and again. The devil never quits putting temptations in front of us. We also need to think that Abram and Sarah, they've been in this land for 10 years. 10 years seems like a long time to wait for the promises of God. Verse 3, it says, And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. Sometimes when we read the Bible and go to the next chapter, We don't realize the time that has passed, all the things that have happened. So Abram and Sarai, they try to solve God's problem for him. They try to fix what they thought was wrong in their own strength. Ten years is a long time, my friends. But God is never late. He's also never early, but he's always on time. We need to, in obedience, walk in faith and trust in him. And actually, it's amazing, even after this happened that Ishmael is born, they wait another 13 years until Isaac would be born. But back to the story, Abram does what Sarah suggests and makes and makes the servant girl Hagar pregnant. Verse 4, And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So this servant girl is pregnant, what her master's wife could never be. And now she looks down on her master's wife and Sarai is angry. Why is she angry? This would have shown to others that she was the problem. Her servant girl would now appear to be more blessed than she was. We could say the results were there. They had the baby. The flesh produced results, but they were sorry, especially Sarah. She's even mad at Abram. Look at verse 5. And Sarah said to Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. See, remember, whatever we try to do in our own flesh without God makes us miserable. It makes everybody around us miserable. Sarai was mad. The servant girl was proud. She started to think she was better than her. Sarai's mad at Abram. Sin creates problems. More problems than we think it will. We usually don't think of the consequences of sin. But even if we do, we don't think of how far sin will take us, what all the consequences will be. They have a baby. Abram has a son, but they're miserable. The results that they had waited for all these years when done in their way actually made more problems than they could have imagined. 
And to this day, the war between Muslims and Jews is still from exactly this sin. So Sarah blames Abram. And in truth, Abram as the spiritual leader should have known what was wrong and right. And Abram finally says, well, do what you want. Verse six, Abram says unto Sarah, behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. It seems that Abram again wants to get out of the responsibility that he should have taken as a man. And we see his wife, Sarai, she treats Hagar harshly, hatefully. And that's also not God's will. Whoever it is in our life, whatever they've done to us, it's our decision how we treat them. And God's way is always love, forgiveness, and kindness. The Bible says it gets so bad for Hagar that she actually runs away. But the story of Hagar isn't done. It's kind of amazing. We would think this story's over. The Bible will keep going. But God has a plan for her. Verse 7 and 8. And the angel of the Lord found her, that's Hagar, by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's mister, whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. Hagar runs away, runs to some water. And this Egyptian slave lady with the son of Abram is met by the angel of the Lord. It's the first time in the Bible, remember we're in Genesis chapter 16, that we read that the angel of the Lord comes to a person. In Genesis 22, we'll read the angel of the Lord later comes to Abraham. The angel of the Lord would later come to Moses in Exodus 3 and to Balaam in Numbers 22, to Israel collectively in Judges 2. The angel of the Lord would later appear to Gideon in Judges 6 and to Samson's parents in Judges 13, to David in 2 Samuel 24 and to Elijah in 1 Kings 19. But here in Genesis 16, this is the first time in the Bible we read the angel of the Lord comes to a person. The angel of the Lord did not come to Noah or Enoch or Abram before this. The angel of the Lord came to a single mother who had run away, who was mistreated, who had no one. Friends, God cares about those who are mistreated. God cares about those who have nothing. God cares about those who've been left by maybe their husbands or their wives. The Bible says, there is nothing that can separate you from God's love. Jesus says, what you've done for the least of these, that's what you've done for me. And then he gives examples of giving hungry to eat, thirsty to drink, giving the naked clothing, visiting those who are sick and in prison. God loved Hagar and had a plan for her life. And my friend, as long as you are breathing, God has a plan for your life. I think often in life, we're so quick to give up on people to say they've done something terrible, messed up their life in a terrible way, and they're just too far gone. And yet God has a plan. God cares. God loves people. I wonder, do you and I? And remember, this whole story came to be because Abram and Sarai sinned, because they tried to fulfill God's plan in their own strength, with their own intelligence. The Hagar problem, that she was in the desert, started with the sin of Abram and Sarai. In closing, there's two questions the angel asked Hagar. Where did you come from and where are you going? I think we should all ask ourselves these questions to see what's happening in life. Hagar came from a rich master where she always had enough. That's what she answers the angel. But you notice she says nothing to the angel about where she's going because she's got no idea. She's in the wilderness by a spring of water. Sometimes because we hate so much where we are, we forget all that we have. And if we try a new path, maybe we're going nowhere. If I can encourage you in your life, look at where you were. Maybe you were lost. Maybe you were without Jesus. And look at where you're going. My prayer would be that you're on your way to heaven because you've accepted the free gift of Jesus Christ. So back to the two questions. Where did you come from? And where are you going? My name is Wes Hepner. You've been listening to the Gospel Message Radio Ministry. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great next week. Next week, a special Thanksgiving message. I hope you'll be here. I think you'll be blessed. We can all learn more about thankfulness. Our website is gospelmessageradio.com. 
Have a super next week. Be blessed and be a light for all those that are around you.